This is a very basic version of the game Lights Out, built in Microsoft Excel using VBA. The way this game works is you click any cell and it will change the colour of that cell plus all adjacent cells. So if I click this one here, this one will turn to black, as will all the adjacent ones, like so. If I now click here, this one, which is currently black, will turn to white and all the others will turn to black. And what would usually happen is you have an initial setup and then the objective is to um, remove all of the black cells. So you can create a sort of random setup by clicking around randomly. And then the aim of the game is to clear all those black cells by clicking in the right places. And you work your way through it like this until eventually you have none left. And it is often quite a challenge to figure out. So rather than a video of me trying to solve this puzzle, I wanted to show you the code behind it. So here we are in VBA. All of the code for this um, spreadsheet is held within the sheet one object. I'm actually going to hide the Project Explorer now just so we can focus on the code as a whole. So this first sub at the top here is the worksheet sheet selection change. So this is triggered whenever um, someone selects a new cell within that worksheet. And the first thing we're going to do is this check. We're going to check if the user has selected only one cell. And because if they select more than one, then it doesn't know which cell to choose. Um, so I've used the target.rows.count and target.columns.count to figure this out. So basically I'm saying there must only be one row and one column selected and therefore one cell. You can also do target.count, but this throws an overflow error when a user selects a huge amount. Um, whereas when you deal with rows and columns, there's a smaller number to deal with so that error does not occur. So let me just quickly demonstrate that. I'll put a breakpoint in here and I'll select multiple cells. And you can see if you hover over here that there are more than one rows selected. There are three in fact, and therefore this condition is already broken. And so it skips it. And this statement at the bottom here simply refocuses the cursor to a cell just outside of the play um, area. And that's in order to remove the currently selected range and make it look nice and neat. That also allows the user to click the same single cell twice. Um, otherwise, if it didn't move away from there, it wouldn't be a selection change and this code wouldn't occur. If I now do the same thing, but I select one cell, you can see it's going to move into that because the row count is one and the column count is one. And now we're in to the rest of the code. The next check it does is this in space function, which is down here. What I've done here is I've entered the row number and the column number, and it's just going to check if that is indeed in the play area. And my player area is um, A1 to E5. So the row must be above zero and less than or equal to five. And the column must also be above zero and less than or equal to five. You can change this, the size of your um, play area by decreasing or increasing these values. Um, but if I just move through that, you'll see that that condition is met and therefore it returns true and we have now entered into this statement. So the next thing it's going to do is, is iterate through all of the cells surrounding the cell we just selected, including the one we just selected. And I will do that by um, offsetting by minus one and then working my way to one for both the row and the column. So here, this is minus one for the row and minus one for the column. And then this is minus one for the row and zero for the column and so on. And so it's going to look at all of these values in this three by three area around the cell I just clicked. 
So it starts off with i equals minus 1 and j equals minus 1. And so we're going to add that to our row number to offset it. So our row number is 2 and our column number is 3. So what it's going to do is look at um, the cell in position row 1 and column 2, which is this here. So we apply the same check for each of these cells. So we use the in space function again just to check that the cell we're looking at is actually within the play area. Otherwise, we ignore it. The other check it's going to do here is make sure that the absolute value of i and j is less than 2. And the reason we do that is because when um, i equals minus 1 or 1 and j also equals minus 1 or 1, these are the cells diagonally from the center. And we're not interested in those, so we want to ignore those. So we only want a situation when the absolute value of those two added together is less than 2. Um, so it goes through that in space function, returns true, and oh yes, it does skip it. It skips it because these two are minus one and minus one, and therefore it's a diagonal and it's ignored. Now next we're going to be on i minus one and j zero, in which case we're looking at this cell here. On this occasion, the in space will return true, as will this second part of the statement here, because i is now minus 1 and j is 0 so if you take the absolute value of those and add them together they are less than 2. So let's go through in space is true and now we're in that statement and what it needs to do now is switch the color of that cell. So it will check the current color and if it's 0 i.e. black it will then change it to um, have no color at all which is this minus 4142. Otherwise, it will colour it in black. So in this case, each one of them are, is going to be coloured black. And we work our way through. And each time it finds a cell that should be checked, it's colouring it black. If I hit F5, it will run through all the code. And it's now finished. And that is how it works. That is all of the code for this. Um, if you would like a copy of this spreadsheet, please drop me an email. My email is in the description. Um, and I hope you enjoyed watching.